Have you ever wondered what exactly happens when foreign invaders attack your body? Let's start from the very beginning. When we talk about infections, we're referring to the invasion and multiplication of harmful microorganisms in our body. These could be bacteria, viruses, fungi, or parasites. Each microorganism is like an unwanted guest who not only refuses to leave but also invites more of its kind to the party. Now here's something that might surprise you. Our bodies are like bustling cities housing trillions of these microorganisms. Yes, you heard it right, trillions. But don't panic just yet. Not all the residents of our body are harmful. Many of them are beneficial and play a vital role in our health. These good microorganisms help in digestion, produce essential vitamins, and even protect us from their harmful counterparts. Our body is like a teeter-totter, constantly balancing between these good and bad microorganisms. When this balance is maintained, we enjoy good health. However, problems arise when harmful microorganisms gain the upper hand. They may multiply rapidly, interfering with normal bodily functions, or release toxins that damage tissues and organs. This is what we commonly refer to as an infection. Infections can occur in any part of the body. They can be localized, affecting just one area, or systemic, spreading throughout the body. They can be acute, coming on suddenly with severe symptoms, or chronic, developing slowly and lasting for long periods. Now you might be thinking, how can we maintain this delicate balance of microorganisms? The answer lies in our immune system, our body's inbuilt defense mechanism. It's like the body's police force, constantly patrolling and protecting us from harmful invaders. So maintaining a balance between these good and bad microorganisms is crucial for our health. But what happens when this balance is disrupted? Well, that's a story for another scene. Stay tuned as we explore the fascinating world of infections, their types, symptoms, prevention, and the rising concern of antibiotic resistance. Until then, remember knowledge is not just power, it's protection. So what happens when harmful microorganisms invade our bodies? Let's explore the diverse world of infections. First up, we have bacterial infections. These are caused by bacteria, single-celled organisms that can survive in diverse environments, including inside our bodies. Some bacteria are beneficial, but others can cause illnesses such as strep throat, urinary tract infections, and tuberculosis. Next, there are viral infections. Viruses are even smaller than bacteria and need a host to survive. They penetrate cells and hijack them to multiply. The common cold, influenza, and COVID-19 are examples of viral infections. Then we have fungal infections caused by fungi, a diverse group of organisms that include yeasts, molds, and mushrooms. Some fungi live naturally on our bodies without causing harm, but others can lead to conditions like athlete's foot, ringworm, and yeast infections. Finally, there are parasitic infections. Parasites are organisms that live on or in a host organism and get their food at the host's expense. Parasitic infections can range from relatively harmless ones, like lice, to more severe conditions like malaria, caused by mosquito-borne parasites. Each type of infection is unique and requires different treatments. For bacterial infections, antibiotics are often the go-to treatment. However, they're ineffective against viral infections, which typically need to run their course, though antiviral medications can help in some cases. Fungal infections are usually treated with antifungal medications, while parasitic infections may require antiparasitic drugs. However, treatment can vary widely depending on the specific parasite and the severity of the infection. Understanding the distinctions between these types of infections is more than just an exercise in trivia. It's a crucial part of making informed healthcare decisions. For instance, knowing that antibiotics can't treat viral infections can prevent unnecessary and potentially harmful use of these drugs. Knowing the differences between types of infections can be empowering, aiding in better healthcare decisions. But how can you tell if you are infected? How can you tell if your body is under attack? Here are some signs to watch out for. When harmful microorganisms invade our body, they trigger a response from the immune system. This battle between the invaders and our defense mechanism often results in common symptoms we can observe. One of the most common symptoms is fever. The body's thermostat, located in the brain, gets a signal to increase body temperature. This is an attempt to make the environment less hospitable for the invaders. So, if you're feeling unusually hot, it might be your body's way of saying it's fighting off something. Fatigue is another telltale sign. When your body is working overtime to battle an infection, it can drain your energy reserves, leaving you feeling exhausted. If you're feeling unusually tired without an apparent reason, it might not just be a lack of sleep. Inflammation is our body's response to injury or infection. 
It's characterized by redness, warmth, swelling, and sometimes pain. So if a part of your body is inflamed, it might be a sign of an ongoing battle against an infection. Pain too is a common symptom, especially if the infection is in a specific part of the body. The inflamed area can be sensitive to touch or movement, making it hurt. So don't ignore persistent or unusual pain. It might be your body's way of raising a red flag. These symptoms are just the body's way of signaling that it's under attack. Recognizing them early on is vital. It allows us to seek medical attention in time and prevents the infection from spreading or getting worse. However, remember that these symptoms are also common in many other conditions. So it's essential not to self-diagnose and instead seek professional medical advice. Recognizing these symptoms early can be a lifesaver, but wouldn't it be better to prevent infections in the first place? They say prevention is better than cure, and it's definitely true when it comes to infections. In this hyper-connected world, where microorganisms are just a handshake away, safeguarding our health becomes paramount. One of the most effective ways to do this is by strengthening our immune system, which is our body's first line of defense against infections. Our immune system is like an unsung hero, tirelessly working to protect us from harmful invaders. It's a complex network of cells and proteins that defends the body against infection. But how can we support this hero and bolster our defenses? Firstly, Leading a healthy lifestyle is key. Regular physical activity helps to boost the immune system by promoting good circulation, allowing the cells and substances of the immune system to move through the body freely and do their job efficiently. Good hygiene is also essential in preventing infections. Simple habits like washing your hands regularly, especially before meals and after using the restroom, can significantly reduce the risk of infections. Another important aspect of infection prevention is vaccination. Vaccines train our immune system to recognize and fight specific viruses or bacteria. They prepare our bodies to fight off invaders before they can cause disease, arming our immune system with the knowledge it needs to tackle infections head on. Finally, a balanced diet plays a crucial role in maintaining a strong immune system. Consuming a variety of nutrients can enhance our immune response. Foods rich in vitamin C and E, zinc, and omega-3 fatty acids, for example, can help boost our immune health. So remember, your immune system is your body's personal army, working round the clock to protect you. Nurturing it with a healthy lifestyle, proper hygiene, vaccinations, and a balanced diet is your best bet against infections. A strong immune system is our best defense against infections. But what happens when our defenses are compromised due to antibiotic resistance? Antibiotic resistance is a global health concern, but what is it and why should we care? Simply put, antibiotic resistance happens when bacteria change in response to the use of antibiotics and become able to withstand their effects. This means that antibiotics that once killed the bacteria or stopped them from multiplying no longer work. The overuse and misuse of antibiotics are key contributors to this issue. When antibiotics are used too frequently or incorrectly, it gives bacteria the opportunity to adapt and become resistant. This is a serious concern because it makes treating infections increasingly difficult and sometimes impossible. Imagine this, you have a bacterial infection that would typically be cured with antibiotics, but due to antibiotic resistance, those medicines no longer work. The bacteria continue to multiply, causing more harm and potentially leading to severe complications. It's a frightening scenario, right? So what can we do to help? The answer lies in being responsible. Only use antibiotics when prescribed by a healthcare professional. Follow the prescribed dosage and course, and never share or use leftover antibiotics. It's crucial to remember that antibiotics are not a cure-all. They don't work against viral infections like the common cold or flu. Being responsible with our health choices can make a big difference in the fight against antibiotic resistance. And that's a wrap on our journey through the world of body infections. We've navigated the diverse types of infections, their symptoms, and the importance of prevention and responsible antibiotic use. Remember, staying informed about these issues is crucial in making healthy lifestyle choices. Knowledge is power, especially when it comes to our health. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more health-focused content. Until next time, stay healthy and stay informed.